Hey friends, welcome back to Toral at Homestead. Thanks so much for stopping by to watch. Today I want to talk to you guys about feeding your family during a time of recession. This is actually going to be a two-part series. Today we're going to talk about planning and shopping. And then in the second video we'll talk about cooking, preserving, and investing. I'm hoping there'll be some information in these videos that you haven't heard before that'll kind of help um, ease a little bit of the burden and help you bring an abundance into your home um, during this time that is crazy, right? Um, we're in a recession, maybe headed for a depression. Um, farmers are talking about how things are, you know, the growing season has been rough on them and we are seeing the prices really skyrocket in our stores. Um, there are shortages in some areas. So we know that things are getting tough and I just want to offer some helps here. Um, our family has been on both sides of the poverty line over the years. And, you know, while things are looking up for us in this season, we have ha been through a lot of times where I had to be a really frugal shopper, um, you know, as far as meal planning and making sure that we had what we needed um, paycheck to paycheck. And so I've learned quite a bit over the years, and I used to share all of this on my blog, um, but I'm kind of in the middle of transitioning over, so we'll do videos for now, and then maybe I can pick up on the blog soon. All right, so we're going to start off with talking about planning. I really think that meal planning is a big key to making sure that you have what you need when you need it, <laughs> that you have an abundance um, and that you're not going without. Now I use, sometimes I just use notebook paper, but one thing that I have used over the years that I've really enjoyed, this is a meal planning calendar. Um, you can find several of these online. Uh, this one I got from Passion for Savings and I think I got it like 10 years ago. Yeah, this is dated 2012, so it's been quite a while. That I've been using this um, weekly menu planner. She has spots for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then over here she has a spot for snacks. I don't really do you know plan snacks for my family and so I use that spot to write out um, notes to myself like you know don't forget to thaw chicken or make sure you soak the beans or things like that just kind of cooking notes so I don't forget things. Um, but I found this to be really handy. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description box for you on that meal planning calendar. Um, I think really, you know, your first step, sit down and plan out your meals. If you know what you're cooking and you have a plan, um, you'll spend a lot less on impulse things at the grocery store and then, um, you know, you won't be just kind of scrounging around in the evenings trying to figure out what it is you're going to cook and then just, oh fine, we'll just get pizza again, you know. Uh, instead, you can put together a meal that you have planned out, that you have everything um, shopped for and you are ready to go. Um, this also will really help if you have children that are at the age that they could be working in the kitchen because if you have a plan already and you have all the ingredients, it's much easier to pull them in and teach them how to cook and um, eventually have them cook, right? So I plan and shop for two weeks at a time and I will get all the ingredients that we need for two weeks worth of meals except for sometimes I don't get fresh produce just depending on what season it is and what it is that I need. Sometimes you can save your fresh produce for two weeks um, but sometimes I go, you know, after the first week and just pick up the fresh items that we need. But the more you can preserve and put away, the less you'll have to do that. So we'll talk about that again, like I said, in the second video. Another thing that really helps when you are trying to um, make sure that you have what you need in your kitchen um, is to cut back on grazing. I don't allow my children to just come and go as far as food goes. You know, when they're hungry, they just go get something. We actually have set meal times or, you know, approximates. <laughs> um, you know, we have breakfast sometime between 8 and 9, depending on the day. Lunch is between 11 and 12 30 and then dinner somewhere after 5 30 but before 7 so um, these are the times that they eat if they need a snack in the afternoon I always have fruit on the counter and cut up vegetables in the fridge that they are welcome to get without asking um, so it keeps them from grazing on just whatever and eating the ingredients that you actually needed for the meal that you planned out now um, this works really great for my kids however I have chosen not to put any kind of requirement like this on my husband. Um, he works for these groceries, he pays for them, and so I am not going to tell him what he can eat and when. Um, if you think about that, the other, you know, if the tables were turned, there's <laughs> no way that I would be okay with him telling me what I can eat and when. So for my husband, I just make sure that I have the things in the house that, you know, he usually likes to have. And um, I ask him before I go to the grocery store, you know, is there anything you want me to pick up? 
And it's just kind of our agreement that, you know, if there's not snacky stuff in the house that he wants, that he probably just go out and get it um, rather than eating ingredients that I need for a meal. Um, he always, you know, tries to ask me if I'm going to need this or that before he cooks it just to make sure. Um, and so in turn, I'm not really <laughs> making a big deal about what he's eating. Uh, we do also require our adult children to eat what we've eaten during mealtime, even if not they're not there during that mealtime. So, for instance, I have one son who often works night shifts or overnight shifts. And so, you know, when he comes home and it's midnight or two in the morning or whatever, um, and he's hungry, he is, you know, supposed to be eating what it is we had for dinner. So we have tacos, then he needs to warm up taco stuff. Um, that kind of thing so that way they're not again eating the ingredients that I need for my meals and they're not just in there grazing on things um, otherwise they just bring home their own food and eat you know what it is that they purchased so I'm pretty strict about who can eat what when you know because if I have a stack of tortillas and I'm going to make tacos in a couple of nights but the kids eat them all for you know quesadillas during lunches <laughs> then I go to make my, my tacos and they're gone um, not happy <laughs> so um, I would encourage you to make rules like that for your home and um, whatever works good for your own situation just to make sure that you have what you need when you need it. Alright, another thing that has helped me is I make lists of all of the meals that our family enjoys. Um, I actually have a Google Doc that has all of the meals that our family enjoys for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and I used my calendars when I showed you this calendar. I actually about 10 probably more like 12 or 13 years ago, I thought to myself, gosh, you know, I should make some kind of a, a list of all of the foods that we like to eat. And that way, when I don't know what to cook, I can go to my list and see, you know, oh, we haven't had that forever or whatever. So I thought about doing that. And so I started saving these little calendars and I saved them for, it's been probably 12 years now. <laughs> so recently I decided to get all my little calendars out and start making my list. So this helps tremendously because, you know, over the years we've eaten a lot of different things and so it gives us lots of variety, lots of ideas that can be reminded that so-and-so really liked that thing and we hadn't had it for a couple of years now and pull it back out, you know, and make that again. Um, you can do the same thing with Pinterest. If you are into Pinterest, make some Pinterest boards of foods that you like, um, seasonal or by ingredients or whatever works for you and just kind of, you know, keep those and consult those. Um, it really is all about planning. The more you plan, the better you're going to do. Um, I also like to plan for busy days, okay? So um, I am a stay-at-home mom. However, that doesn't mean that I am home all the time. We have a lot of things that happen outside the house. Um, one of the big things that we do weekly is a BMX racing. And so we are out at a park that is about 45 minutes from our house. And for some reason, they always do races right at mealtimes. And so I guess, you know, we're functioning on the public school schedule. Like, I get that. But... It's kind of frustrating if you are trying to feed your family a meal. So I have invested in um, things that make that easier for me. So we have two BMX night meals that we make, um, burritos or hot sandwiches. And so during the afternoon sometime, we will make up a bunch of burritos, just, you know, beans, cheese, salsa, whatever, um, wrapped up in tortillas, and we'll wrap them individually in foil um, and stick them in a crock pot on warm. Or we'll do that with hot sandwiches. So, you know, we'll use some kind of roll or bread whatever cheese and meat and a lot of times we like to put pesto in there and then wrap them up in foil and put them in the crock pot on warm so they're sitting in there staying nice and warm and then when it's time to go to the vmx track then we just take our crock pot along we've got something that's portable it's not going to spill everywhere and then we'll just take you know a veggie tray and some fruit for dessert and we always keep a case of water bottles in the back of our car so we have everything we need there for everybody to eat and we're not having to run through the drive through So, you know, I have been the drive through mom before and I still, every now and then, will go through a drive through for a couple people. I don't usually ever go through a drive through for all 10 of us, but um, I have really gotten out of that by planning ahead. So you can do it. It'll save a ton of money. You'll feed your family healthier. Just take the time to plan things. Once you find a system that works for you and, be, and it becomes a routine, it's going to be super, super simple. Um, so I would just encourage you to take the time to sit down and plan the plan <laughs> and then stick to the plan. All right, so now we're going to move into talking about shopping. Um, there are so many ideas out there for saving money, coupons, um, you know, look for the sales. Those things are all kind of obvious no-brainer thing. So I'm going to hopefully offer you a few ideas that um, maybe you haven't considered before. Just go a little deeper with all that. So like I said, prices are through the roof right now um, and 
according to farmers, they aren't going to get any better. Um, they're also warning us about scarcity. So, um, you know, whether or not you're experiencing that where you live right now, um, there are plenty of reports out there of people who are. And so it's just good to be, you know, a wise shopper and um, to be prepared because we want to make sure that we can still give our family an abundance um, and feed them healthy and keep them happy, right? All right, so the first thing, um, I just really, you're gonna have to learn how to shop differently. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, those of us who are used to just going to the grocery store, getting whatever sounds good, and throwing whatever in the cart, just our normal, regular stuff, we really need to, first of all, evaluate necessities. Um, think about what things really are a necessity and um, shop for those things first, right? So, um, I'm not going to define that for you because, you know, we all have different needs and different ways of doing things. So you define whatever your necessities are and shop for those first. Um, reading a price label. A lot of people don't know how to read a price label. I've printed this one off. This one is from Walmart. The price here, $5.88, that's the price of the item. But what you want to look for when you're reading a price label is this over here, the unit price. Okay, the top of this box is unit price. Um, this one is price per pound. Sometimes it'll be price per ounce, um, per each, per box, whatever, but it'll be the unit price, okay? Um, oh, forgive me, this is the price per ounce. $1.47 per ounce, okay? That's what you want to look for because you want to shop on price per ounce, not actual price. For instance, if I have two bottles of barbecue sauce and one of them is $5.28 and one of them is $5.39, okay, I would just naturally reach for the $5.28 and throw it in my cart because it's cheaper. However, if I look at the unit price, sometimes I'll see that I'm actually saving more and getting more by shopping for the more expensive one, the $5.39 one, right? Because if it has a better unit price, price per ounce, okay? It could be that the bottle is a different size. It could be that one bottle has a concave bottom. Have you noticed that? How a lot of the, you know, peanut butter is one, of, one that's really doing it lately where they've concaved the bottom in real deep um, so that you're actually getting less for the same size container. Um, you know, made them just a little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter, filled the bag just a little bit less or a lot less, right? If you've been buying chips lately, oh my goodness. Um, so <laughs> one more reason to get off chips, right? But anyway, if you want to look and see what the price per ounce is to really get the best value, right? So sometimes this might require you to change brands. A lot of people don't want to change brands. Sometimes we will find though that we just really need to do that in order to save money. I would encourage you, if you don't want to change brands, try making it homemade. Anything that you can buy in the store uh, that is not in its natural state, you can make homemade. So, you know, things like fruits, vegetables, you know, milk, that kind of stuff is just about in as natural of a state as you're going to be able to get it. You know, eggs, those sorts of things, of course, you don't really make those yourself. But um, anything that comes in a package, in a bag, in a box, in a can, and frozen, uh, most of that stuff you can make yourself. Chicken nuggets, canned soups, cream soups, there's so many recipes that call for cream soups. Um, you can make all of those for pennies. You can make cream of mushroom soup for pennies <laughs> um, as opposed to two dollars, you know, for a little can. So anything really that you can buy at the store, prepackaged, you can make yourself at home. You'll save a lot more money. So if you don't want to change brands, try making it yourself and see if you can tweak it with your own flavorings and seasonings and get whatever that product is to the point that you can enjoy it and save money to boot. Okay, daily snacks. Sometimes we might want to look at our daily snacks and see if we can turn them into weekly treats instead. Um, this is a real big thing for those who like to go get coffees. <laughs> I'm sorry, I touched the hot button, but uh, me and my friends, we have a local coffee place called Seven Brew and we're always teasing each other about, you know, whatever good thing we did, we earned a Seven Brew. Um, and because we really like Seven Brew, right? But when you go there, it's like five or six bucks for a medium and like seven or eight for a large. And it's just a lot of money, right? If you're going several times a week. Um, so try to get the, to the point where you're making those just your weekly treats. Um, because especially if you're drinking your calories, that's just so a waste, right? Um, but, you know, again, you have to evaluate your necessities. So <laughs> that's just an example. <laughs> Don't come back at me. <laughs> One way that I curb um, a lot of extra snacking is when I'm at the store and I'm, you know, feeling like I want to buy, say I want to buy a candy bar or something. Um, I look at the candy bar and I'm like, this is almost $2 now, just crazy. But, um, you know, okay, $2 for myself, fine. But 
I imagine that I would need to buy that for everybody, right? So if I'm going to buy myself a candy bar, I need to buy everybody a candy bar. Well, there's 10 people living in my house right now. So am I really going to spend $20 on candy bars? No, I'm not going to do that. And so I'll skip the candy bar and then just go home and make everybody, you know, cookies or something from ingredients that I have in the cupboard. Um, that is just one idea that I used to just kind of help get me out of that mode of just grabbing a snack here and there, whatever, is am I going to share this with everyone? Probably not. Therefore, I should probably just go home and make something that everybody can share for just, you know, pennies. Another idea is to use a grocery pickup. I use a grocery pickup quite a bit, but you want to be kind of careful and watch your prices because some places will charge you a little extra if you shopped online and had, you know, went and picked it up as opposed to picking it up yourself in the store. Not all stores do that, but some do. Um, but I find, because I am an impulse shopper, that I actually save money even if they are tacking a few pennies onto my groceries to do the grocery pickup um, because it keeps me from just going aisle to aisle and impulse buying things, right? Especially if you shop in a place, you know, like Walmart or somewhere that, you know, Target, whatever that has your groceries and other stuff. <laughs> it's really hard not to walk through the aisles of other stuff and throw in a whole bunch of stuff and then go get your groceries. And I do that all the time. I just pick up crazy stuff that I do not even need. So um, doing the online, you know, shopping and then the grocery pickup really helps me a lot because I, I don't impulse buy when I'm shopping online. I'm actually look at the total and really paying a lot of attention when I shop online as opposed to in the store. I don't, I don't total my groceries at all. I just grab whatever. So um, if you sit down, make your list out, you're not going to impulse buy as much and you know, send it off. You go pick it up. They put it in your car for you. You're not looking, you're not looking. You didn't even enter the store. You get home and put it away. Okay, you're done. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you have to sort of play these games with yourself to get um, yourself out of that mode of extra spending and you'll find that you actually do save quite a bit. And then my last tip for shopping is to check local. Check with your local farmers and see what they have. Um, it's getting to the point now where groceries in the stores are so expensive that we can go and buy organic things from our farmers for the same price or even cheaper. So we'll have the health benefits, we'll save some money, and we'll also help our local farmers to stay in business. Um, I have gotten to the point now where I am buying all of my dry goods, like you know beans and grains and all that kind of stuff, um, things that don't need to be refrigerated, so even oil or you know just whatever, all kinds of stuff I'm buying off of Azure Standard. Um, they have a drop-off location near me, and so I just make my order online with Azure Standard and they go and pick it up once a month or twice a month, depending. And um, they're just a family owned business out of Oregon, even though they have, you know, nationwide service, they're just a family owned business. Um, not a small business, but not a corporation really, you know, so um, I like to support them. And then there's a local dairy that our family is getting ready to start buying um, our dairy things from. And so I like to support that. My husband actually started making our own cheese. So we're really just picking up milk and then he's going to turn it into all kinds of awesomeness. Um, I have a place locally where I can get chicken and beef um, and lamb when we need it um, and it's a local uh, farmers like a co-op and then they just have a lady who drives around the area and drops off orders um, a couple of times a month so I've gotten in with that and then eggs I have a friend who is selling eggs at a very 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 nice price <laughs> very sweet of her to sell these farm fresh eggs at a low price lower than you're getting in the stores um, and so I've been buying eggs from her and so you know for one thing like I said health benefits um, I am saving some money in some cases in some cases I'm not saving some money but I find that there's actually a bigger benefit to shopping with your local farmers and getting on their lists okay because as the stores are running out of groceries and we see shortages we see things getting shut down um, farmers getting shut down whatever um, if I am on the lists of these local farmers then I'm going to be one of the first in line to get what they have available right um, so I try to buy from them regularly and make relationships with those farmers and those producers so that if we do get to a point where those things are not available in my you know regular grocery store I still have a source from which to get those things for my family so just an idea to throw out there if you have the ability to do that um, you know I would really love to be able to get more produce from local farmers um, but so far I haven't found a place that um, offers enough produce at a reasonable price so I am growing a lot of things in my garden um, and so then I'll go to like a local grocery store and a family owned grocery store here in my town when they get their produce from a local farmer so it all works out. <laughs>
All right, friends, I hope that helps you with a few ideas for feeding your family during this time of recession, um, at least with planning and shopping. Like I said, stay tuned because I'm going to post that second video on preserving, cooking, and investing here shortly. I hope this video blessed you, and I will see you soon. All right, bye.